All right, AA, get on the ready, because here you go. A.A. Rubin only exists only in dreams within dreams. He writes everything from formal poetry to comics, literary fiction to science fiction and fantasy, and almost everything in between. A member of the SFWA and first place winner of the Poet Like Poe contest, six degrees background of Poe. His work has appeared recently in Love Letters to Cool Poe, a whole in a voice. Welcome, A.A. to the launch party. How are you guys? Doing well. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Happy to be here. Yes, we're happy you're here with us. So do you want to just talk a little bit about um, yourself, Love Letters to Poe, anything you want to add um, before you do your reading? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I am... Um... I'm a writer and a poet, and um, I was in both of the first two issues of Love Letters to Poe mm -hmm. here. Um, I write, as you said, in a variety of genres and mediums, but I've always loved Edgar Allan Poe. I'm very excited about the third volume because, as I said in my promo video, that uh, the Telltale Heart was uh, actually my introduction to Edgar Allan Poe. I uh, got the uh, a book, a tiny little book of collected Edgar Allan Poe stories from the Scholastic Book Flyer had to be in fifth or sixth grade or so. That's and, cool. Uh, That's really cool. The very first story in that book was The Telltale Heart. So it's okay. probably the first thing by Poe that I read. That so is awesome. Though, <laughs> yeah, even though my work here is uh, poetry, most of my gothic horror is poetry. Um, the very first thing I read by Poe was actually that short story. Okay, very cool. Well, and if you have not read his um, AA and his first name is Ari, so we may, I may say Ari yeah. occasionally, but he is AA Ruin. That's how he is known in the literature world. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, his work is amazing. And um, I think that's why the judges chose your poem for our poetry contest, because it was Thank amazing. You. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. So let's see. So what is the work you're going to share with us today? I'm going to be reading a selection of poetry. Um, but okay. first, I'm going to also be adding a giveaway for anyone who um, pledges during this half hour. Okay. Um, and cool. I'm going to see if I can share it here. Okay. Um, let's see. And it was so, the print, correct? Yes, it's, a, okay. it's an art print from my book. Uh, from Into That Darkness Peering, which is written by me and illustrated by Marika Brasiano. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it'll be an art print. It'll, it's actually one of the interior pages from the book. The book is up for a visitor award yes. this weekend. So yes. wish us luck. Um, yes. But they're, I... they're, they're nice prints. They're the same size as the book, A4, printed on nice cardstock. Um, you know, and... Uh, We'll do a drawing at the end for uh, mm -hmm. whoever, you know, whoever pledges during uh, this hour. Yes. And I, I'm very excited because we'll get to meet you in person. Jeannie isn't able to go no. with me. Um, my husband's going to be with me, but so excited to get to actually meet you in person. Yes. So yes. I'm exciting. looking forward to, to it yeah. too. It's so many online events the last few years. Yes. It's nice it's, to meet people in person again. I agree. I agree. So, I was going to say, um, all right, go ahead and just whenever you're ready to do your poetry reading, we are anxiously awaiting. Yes, so we'll be right. here backing you. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Um, so um, I think I'm going to start out by reading the poem that was in the first edition of Love Letters to Poe, the unthemed edition. Uh, and this is how I personally discovered Love Letters to Poe was just off of a random submission call that I came across that I had a poem for and I actually asked Sarah whether she accepted poetry or not because it wasn't you know and she said that she did and she selected this poem for the uh, for the first edition okay. this poem is called the widow's walk and um, for those of you who don't know a widow's walk is if you've ever seen a kind of Victorian gothic house 
there's often a fence on the roof. There's like a fenced in area, almost like a porch on the roof or a balcony on the roof. And this is featured a lot in, uh, in Long Island where I live. And when I moved out from, uh, from the city to Long Island after my second kid was born, uh, I saw these old Gothic houses with these balconies on top. And I asked what they were, you know, what they were all about. Now the real story of the widow's walk is that they were supposed to be for um, the wives of whalers. Whaling was a big industry on Long Island and they could look out to sea to see the, if their husbands were coming home uh, in the in the ships. Um, however, I heard other stories that weren't necessarily as true and some of them made it into this poem. So this is called The Widow's Walk. Uh, it's from Love Letters to Poe, volume one. She wends her way around her walk and round and round she goes. She does not speak, she does not talk as she wends her way around her walk and round and round she goes, she goes, and round and round she goes. Her husband's dead, her husband's gone, he died alack the day. They will not let her into town, they built a walk for her to round, because he's gone away, away, because he's gone away. The widow wends her way around, round and round her home. The children watch her as they play. They make up stories every day about the witch who eats their bones, their bones. She eats young children's bones. Her husband does not know he's dead. He follows round and round. He whispers nothings in her ear. He does not know she cannot hear. He's buried in the ground, the ground. He's buried underground. The widow wanders round and round neath pale Hecate's moon. She conjures spirits in the dark. Upon her walk above the park, in the night's dark inky gloom, it's gloom, in the night's dark inky gloom. Are any of these stories true? Forsooth, we cannot say. We can't by any magic art divine what's in her secret heart. Her mind we can't assay, assay. Her mind we can't assay. But still we all do dream of her each and every night. She sends us nightmares while we sleep, demons conjured from the deep. In the moon's faint pale light, it's light. In the moon's faint pale light. She wends her way around her walk and round and round she goes. She does not speak, she does not talk as she wends her way around her walk and round and round she goes, she goes and round and round she goes. So that was The Widow's Walk. I'm gonna read the poem that I had in the second Love Letters to Poe anthology uh, that was based around the fall of the House of Usher. Uh, this one is kind of a retelling of the Usher story uh, from the perspective, if you're familiar with the story, there's a ballad that's sung very early on um, in the middle of the story that deals with some dark entities from the past. And the premise of this poem is kind of the story from their perspective and how they are interjecting themselves into the story. As it is from the Fall of the House of Usher, to the extent that you're familiar with the poem, you might pick up on some references that are directly from the short story, you might pick up some references directly from the short story. This one's called When the House of Usher Falls. When the winds of winter whisper their ghostly ghastly howl, when the storm clouds all a twitter, presently we prowl. When the masonry doth shiver, when the dead do walk the halls, in the moonless night at midnight, when the House of Usher falls. When the cerements do blister in discordant melody, well wakened is his sister, risen shall she be, when she takes her fateful footsteps and walks those ancient halls, when the doors for her we open, into, into his arms she falls. When long ago a valley, ruled over by a king, before, before whom saintly seraphs his echoed wisdom sang, when draped now in sorrow those yellow pinioned walls presage some distant morrow when the house of Usher falls. When morning is forgotten, when many years have gone, when your heart's no longer rotten, when you think that you've moved on, when on some night it's storming, in rain and wind withal, in the nightmare till the morning, into his arms she falls. When some day hence you'll wander through the country all alone, presently you'll ponder some ancient ruined stones with insufferable gloominess, perhaps you will recall, that melancholy madness when the house of Usher falls. 
and that was the when the house of usher falls you can find that one love letters to poe volume two um as well okay now i'm going to read the uh poem called night walkers this is the one that won the six degrees of edgar Allan poe poet like poe contest so um since uh they're hosting the uh party i figured um i should definitely read this one uh so this one's called night walkers whistling through the graveyard i came upon a man a ghost of one killed long ago buried in the strand no i am not dangerous he whispered soft to me i just saw you walking here and sought some company for i walk between these stones alone eternally and so i walk there by his side below the pale moon whose light framed us beneath the clouds of night's dark inky gloom all through the night we wandered in perfect harmony as softly in my ear he spoke recounting memories a secret shared betwixt these stones between my friend and me he spoke to me throughout that night until the break of day for with the coming of the light all ghosts must go away returned he unto his grave to rest now peacefully as i was left to ponder what he had said to me whispered lightly in my ear meant only just for me and since that night i've wandered and oft when i'm alone i think about that night i walked between those sacred stones i hope that when i'm dead and gone if restless shall i be some kind soul will stop a while and do the same for me walk with me and talk a while and my companion be again that was night walkers um you can find that on the uh, six degrees uh, website mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. in the uh, poet like poe category yes and we got to do the snap uh, the snap we got to do the snap yes oh all thank of that you. is just amazing oh. thank you thank you so much yes um, and yes. we've got some comments from oh, the chat okay. uh yeah. jenny's going to share yeah, J.L. Royce says, very nice, Ari. He oh, enjoyed that. Thank you. Holly Thompson loves it. Uh, Cirque, Cirque Demonic, which I just love that user ID, <laughs> says that gave me chills. That was wow. Uh, Melanie says that was beautiful, AA, and made her sad, The Widow's oh. Walk. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so J.L. says it's really good all the way around. So Thank, we thank you so much. Yes, that that was the fantastic poems and poet. So that's what all the the comments we've got from the chat for you. So mm -hmm. that's good. Thank we, you. I'm yeah. glad they like it. Um, I really, you know, one of the things that appeals to me about Poe's poetry in particular is is the way he uses uh, meter. Every, yes. Everyone talks about everyone talks about um, you know rhyme and poem, and you know rhyme is you know, passe now in the poetry circles, but I, th I think it's largely because we've forgotten about meter and yeah, some yeah. of the 19th century poets, uh, Poe definitely, Coleridge is in his, dark, in his dark poetry, Byron, these types of people were mm -hmm. really gonna, and it's really the meter that carries the poem. And that's probably the way that Poe influenced me the most is through the use of meter. Um, I, I would totally agree with you on that. Yes. And the biggest issue is also that a lot of people automatically think that rhyming is all is all just limerick. Yeah. But that's not yeah. that's not the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. rhyming actually with the metered is because that's what gives it that rhythm. And that's when yeah. you read. It's not just about how whether it rhymes, but it's how it meets with the syllables, with the beats, mm -hmm. with the yeah. it's like our songs, like in uh, music. Yeah. We like certain songs because we mm -hmm. love the metered beat yep. to it and how the lyrics match. Yeah. And that's what poetry, in my opinion, is. I would used to do a project on poetry when I taught seventh grade. And I would just say, you know, if you love music, put it to music, write a yep. lyric to a beat in your head. And you are writing poetry because you're metering that yep. Yep. Uh, sound. So definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they really get you right here in the field. Oh. That, that's the good yeah. thing right there. Thank and it you. should. It should. Get you in the heart. Especially if it's on I mean, the right that's side. The, the telltale tell tell heart. Exactly. Why, why um, you know, why write gothic if you're not going to yeah. Yeah. do that? That's what gothic is all about. Absolutely. Right? And I really think, like, you know, gothic and horror get lumped together. 
it's really almost like two different genres. It, yes, yeah. absolutely. It, they can be intertwined, but yes. they are two separate. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They're two separate words in the dictionary with two different yeah. definitions, yeah. people. Oh, yeah. yeah. They don't, they're not interchangeable. So Ari, um, have you thought about or have you started on what your poem is going to be for the new volume? Yes, yes. So I'm actually going to do something slightly different because uh, the first thing that came to mind for the Telltale Heart was a villanelle, um, which, is a, which is another form of closed poetry. Mm -hmm. I don't believe Poe ever wrote a villanelle, so it's a little bit different yeah. than what I've had in there before, but, but I checked with... Um, I checked with Sarah, I sent her an early draft, and um, I'm working on that uh, that villanelle now. So I had the okay. two lines that are, in a villanelle, there are two lines that are repeated throughout the poem, and those two lines came to me very quickly with this call, and then it's just a matter of getting the other, okay. the other lines in. Oh, that's going to be great. So it's gonna be <laughs> it's going to be a villanelle. It's going to be called, um, let's see. And still, I and still I hear the beating of his heart. I, I oh, nice. What we're working, okay, is what we're working on there. Okay, great. Um, so you're you said you're definitely going to be at um, the Poe Fest yes. this coming weekend. Yes. Any other events you're going to be at? Um, where like where you live or traveling or anything yeah. in the yeah, next I got a, month or so? October you want to share is, it with yeah, us? October yeah. is is a crazy month for me. So I yeah. have um, us too. <laughs> yes. So we got the Poe po Fest this weekend. The next weekend is New York Comic Con. And I'm not going to have a table at New York Comic Con, but I'm going to be there and around and meeting with people and things like that. The week after that, I'm hold, hosting a Poe-themed poetry workshop and reading at mm -hmm. the uh, Old, Quaker Me Old Quaker Meeting House in Manhasset, uh, Long Island, which was oh, built wow. in the 1700s. It's an old building you can see the cemetery through the window um, we're going to read some poetry we're going to talk about post style um, read some of post poems there'll be a workshop section where you can write um, you know um, write some poems and then there'll be an open mic where people can either read what they wrote at the workshop or whatever they brought with them okay um, so that's on that's on october 19th which is a thursday and then on the 29th i will be at the cold spring harbor whaling museum um for their haunted boozium festival oh Boozium. interesting boozium <laughs> festival yes so um okay. that i will be festival there and i'll have yeah you know, <laughs> i'll have books and whatnot there so that's oh, how great. my october is looking right now so we got something basically boozy? every weekend is they it have booze like you know booze they, they sometimes, or do, booze. They sometimes <laughs> do they, 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 they do have they do have a grog fest and they do have a uh an ale fest whales ales and salty tales which which are great events oh, great little museum yeah. um and i remember um you know one of the other poems i have in there was I just won a blue ribbon at the long island fair when i had a question about some of the historical congratulations up to, thank you um you know i called the educator at the whaling museum and mm -hmm. you know she's she was very helpful and my kids love all the projects that they do so they, they do a, a variety of things there um, nice. Obviously, the like as I had mentioned before, the whaling history. Yeah. Oh, that would be. Is, yeah, that would be very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we also have a comment from Jim says he loves Villanella, Villanelle, Villanelle, whatever. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. Villanella <laughs> is something silly. That's like vanilla. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Villanelle, and he says he writes them also. Okay. okay. And then Sarah says, so good, can't wait to read the finished poem. Yes. So I'm assuming she's aiming that at you, Ari. <laughs> or she uh, could be I aiming it at Jim, too. Yeah, That's true. Be, yeah. yeah. Jim, be, Jim should. Yeah. 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 Oh. Well, Jim already said he, I think he's uh, submitted something oh, already. Good. So okay. That's good. good luck, Jim. Yeah. Good yeah. luck, Jim. And yeah. so, but we, you know, we really enjoyed you submitting to our poetry contest yes. because that was, we got quite a few entries and we were really happy and surprised mm -hmm. and lucky because there was a lot. We didn't get as many youth entries yeah. that we really we're gonna, wanted. We're going to work we're on hoping, that for next year. Yeah, we're hoping next year is going to bring some more in. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um, so, I was yeah. proud because uh, two of my students won 
that they had submitted. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was exciting. Yes. So I think it's about time that we do a raffle, Jenny. Yes, yes, so are you ready are. to go to the wheel? Yes. Let me double check. Let me double check our pledgers all here right. and make sure I've got them all in there. Okay. Yes, we have uh, have all our people, and okay. then I think we're ready to go. And this is only for one, right? One yes, print. one print, print. Uh -huh. into that dark from into that darkness. From right. into that darkness, peering. Yep. Here we go and spinning away. Dun, 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 okay, we're at one bazana. Bazana. Bonanza. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, oh, number 18. Number right. 18. That is Holly Thompson. Yay, Holly. Congratulations, Holly. Woohoo. So you get the print from A.A. A. Rubin. Hope you I'm like writing Holly. it down. Yep, yep. Holly. And so. And I, and I can bring it with me and give it to uh, Sarah at this weekend, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Actually, I think Holly's going to be there. Holly's, Holly's going to be there. I could give yeah. it directly to her. Yes, yeah, exactly. She, she writes Poe-themed uh, po, uh, po children's books, oh, cool. as well as other themes as well. And so she will be there. So okay. you'll get to meet cool. her in person, too. <laughs> and she's a Saturday visitor nominee as well. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, got a lot of people you're going to be seeing yes. and get to share her and I know, and I can't, I cannot wait. So Ari, what else would you like to share? We still got a few minutes left yeah. in your time slot. Uh, sure. Um, let me read a few things if I could share my screen from the book. Yeah, go, um, please go ahead. Yeah, so let me, um, I'll do the print first. Okay. Um, the print, the one on the print first. Here we go. Can you see it? Yes. Good? Is it showing up on the screen? It is, very nicely. Okay. Yes, okay. I love it going to have to yeah it's beautiful right thank you that's why i just had to move the whatever thing that was telling me i was sharing was blocking the words i mean actually oh, gotcha yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. all right so this one uh this one is called last request on the on the book it would have facing pages it's called last request please let me be a ghost if only for one night i've got no need to haunt someone no need to set things right but if you let me be a ghost down to the earth I'll fly and seek to find the one I love just to say goodbye. Wow. So yeah. you get that. Yeah. And I love how there we go. Yes. if you look at uh, Marika's art here, how she did the uh, guy as a ghost over there. And yeah. the whole, like all the intricate details. She's really an amazing artist. Yes, she is. And that's just beautiful and so Poe-esque with you know all of the the loves that you know in his life you know that he lost that he lost yes. and just very very poesque beautiful well, and it also can affect anyone that's lost anyone in mm -hmm. their lifetime absolutely you know just the the idea of the coloring and just you know the black and white is so poignant anyway mm -hmm. But just the whole hint of grief that you can see in the picture mm -hmm. is definitely mm -hmm. what you uh, Actually, and this thing started you know it's october now and it started as as an inktober thing we did together you know the inktober that the artists do um and i would give her a prompt i give her a poem or a microfiction and we did it and then we're like these we have we eventually have to collect these into a book we'll do a few more or make them into a book because yes they needed to live beyond just that mm -hmm. you know, inktober where we were where we were doing it yep. um, yeah yeah it's it is beautiful i'll do uh maybe one more from the book and then uh one more poem if that's okay oh absolutely sure. no it share as much as you would like this is um, your time <laughs> let's uh I'm the let's share. this one is also from into that darkness peering okay um this was this one's a little longer um uh, wait for this thing to yeah, love the artwork here too. That's really cool. So this is, you know, um, this one's called The Wolf in Me. Um, and it's a kind of a twist on the werewolf um, trope, I guess. Mm -hmm. I see the full moon out tonight and I'm transformed by its glow. My lycanthropic change has come. Though seeing me, you'd never know. No fur doth from my skin spring forth, no baying sound, no thirsty howl, need I scream to my Selene, though this night I'm on the prowl. My insides now, though are the wolf, my brain, my mind, my guts, my heart, 
Tonight I hunt with Artemis, transfigured by her lunar arc. My prey he never sees me come, my camouflage is so complete, not until he feels the bite of my elongated canine teeth. Oh, that is nice. really nice. Very nice for October. <laughs> exactly. Um, and any full moon at any month. Yes, which, moon. yeah, which I was going to say, I think the last super moon of the year just happened this yes. week. Yeah. Yes. For, yeah, for, yeah. For, for me, it was the week before fall break, homecoming, the super moon. So it was a trifecta of terror of, mm -hmm. amongst yes. the, the children. So, but it, we made it. <laughs> Yeah, made it to another fall break. Yes. I'm just going to read a couple more. All right. Yeah, we've then, got time. Yeah, we've got time. Okay. So uh, this one, this one's a little different. This was called The Beetle Has a Thousand Eyes. Okay. Um, this one actually, um, this one won third place in the Village of Great Neck uh, Poetry Contest and was actually put up in the train station. Oh, cool. That, um, Very cool. As a kid, I used to see the poetry in motion on the subway. So that was nice. That was kind of cool. It's yeah. called The Beetle Had a Thousand Eyes. Okay. Cool. The, the Beetle Had a Thousand Eyes, The Hummingbird, A Thousand Ears, and Lo, I Found, to My Surprise, A Thousand Strands in Fox's Beard. The Bees, They Had a Thousand Tongues, Which Whispered Softly in the Hive. A song of sorrow softly sung, lamenting their unhappy lives. The beetle cried ten thousand tears. The hummingbird now flew away. The fox's thousand hairs did tear, as I in sorrow cursed the day. And though now many years have gone, and I have traveled where I will, I can't forget those solemn tones, and thus the sound, it haunts me still. And then I'm going to read the one that I was telling you about that won the uh, award and the theme of the Long Island Poetry this year. They give you a theme that everyone has to write about. Oh, okay. Um, so the theme this year was Long Island Haunts. Oh, very and cool. I'm actually, okay. returning to the beginning of my reading, this one is also about a widow's walk. Oh, nice. nice. Okay. So All right, cool. We'll sort of end where we began. The, I love yeah. it. Love it. Circle um, of life. Yes. yes. <laughs> so this is called The Widow's Walk, 1849. Awesome. Um, Cold Spring Harbor, 1849. I walk around the roof at night, up above my home, waiting for his ship to sight, my husband to return. The townsfolk, they all think I'm mad. His ship's gone down, they say. Sunk she was, all lives were lost, buried neath the waves. But still I wend my way around the walk above my home, between the ocean and the moon, a widow now alone for though i know his ship's been lost sunk beneath the sea on certain nights his ghost returns and keeps me company we sit and talk throughout the night until the break of day when waves are crowned with dawn's first light and ghosts must fade away that was the widow's walk 1849 and then i usually end just with this very short one Okay. from uh again from into that darkness peering and you'll see why i end with it this is another one from this is actually the very mm -hmm. last the very last page of into that darkness peering um like the tide that's rolling outward like the moon that sits at dawn i am gone but not forever i shall return anon yeah hey yeah, right. That is beautiful. That brings us to 159. So yes, um, yes, perfection. <laughs> there we go. Thank you Perfect for having ending. me. Yes, thank you. Ari, yes, yes, thank you so much. And um, please um, support the Love Letters to Poets, a great anthology. Um, and I, I'm going to say this, is I don't say this about every anthology that I mean. I'm happy to be in all the publications that I've been in, of course, but the Love Letters to Poe it's really, it's like a community. It's like so many writers that I met through there. Mm -hmm. um, there are people who, well, I haven't met them in person. There are people who I interact with on, online and who really I would consider friends mm -hmm. and, um, you know, writing colleagues and friends and not not every anthology I like. It's really a, um, it's a great project that Sarah's put together. And mm -hmm. um, not, only, not, not only is the work excellent, but... Um, all the people who I've met through there are, are great people as well. 
Yeah, I, I, and, uh, I would agree. Melanie would like to say thanks for sharing with us today, AA. We, you know, got a lot of good comments. Everybody's loving it. And mm -hmm. the artwork is phenomenal. Yes. The whole black and white ink yes. you can, is you, very you powerful. Can, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to find uh, Marika, it's um, Marika Bruciano. Um, if you look, um, I mean, I tag her whenever I post something from it. Okay. But it's, um, I'll put, give you her. Her Instagram is Marika, all one word, Marika Bruce Art, M-I-R-I-K-A-B-R-O-U-S-A-R-T, at Marika Bruce Art. Instagram is where she posts most of her stuff. She's okay. awesome. doing a lot of cool stuff about hauntings in Chicago if people want to. Oh, neat. Oh, okay. yeah. That's great. Will, will, she, will she be at the Poe Fest as she well? Will, she will not. She okay. couldn't. Um, you know, she couldn't make it down. She just, you know, she, I think she's an art teacher in her day job and she gotcha. couldn't get away um, okay. so early in the, so close to the beginning of the year. So understandable. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I will be representing the two of us there. All right. And, um, <laughs> you know, hopefully, I, I don't know if she's going to be, I met her in New York Comic Con. I don't know if she's going to be the, there this year either, but hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You know. Together. Well, JL says, pleasure to have made your acquaintance through the Love Letters to Poe mm -hmm. launch party. Mm -hmm. And we enjoy all of us, you know, all those joining us. And we enjoy you being part of the panel and helping yes. us. And we uh, hopefully soon, I might get to see you in person, but I know you're going to see a lot of people at the festival. So yes. Yes. yeah, can't wait to meet you. Anybody in that area, please come out this yeah. weekend and mm -hmm. check them out for the visitor awards and just get some yeah. get your daily dose of poe yes. yes for two days for two, two days. days yes <laughs> well, you can do day after day the, yeah. the right time of year for it exactly yes. even yeah. if you wouldn't do this at any other time of year it's the right time it's the right time of year for it absolutely exactly. absolutely well thank you ari yeah. yes thank, thank you so you much for having me much. yes and this was great we'll talk to you soon and yes have thank have a good day you. yes bye bye, bye.